The Federal Reserve is doing something it hasn't done in its 100-year history to reinforce the fragile economic recovery. For the first time, it's tying interest rates to joblessness. The central bank said rates will stay near zero until unemployment falls below 6.5%. That could be three years away. Rates will stay there as long as inflation remains below 2.5%. The idea is to give businesses, investors, and families a little more certainty about what to expect. Joining us this morning is Rick Newman, Chief Business Correspondent at U.S. News & World Report. He is also the author of Rebounders, How Winners Pivot from Setback to Success. Rick, good morning to you. Hi, Terrell. Was Bernanke's announcement a complete surprise or was keeping these rates near zero pretty much expected? Uh, part of what happened today was expected and part of it was, was a surprise. Um, so what the Fed did is it basically extended its so-called quantitative easing program. That was generally expected. That's going to go on indefinitely, basically. And then they did this new thing, which, said, which is basically they said, here are the targets we're aiming for. So we're going to continue this aggressive and, uh, frankly, unusual monetary policy until, as you said, unemployment gets to around 6.5 percent, provided that inflation doesn't get out of control. So this is the fir first time the Fed has ever said we're actually targeting the unemployment rate. What's the Fed trying to accomplish here? Is it all about just adding certainty to the situation? What the Fed is basically trying to do is they're trying to give businesses and consumers reasons to spend money. It's kind of that simple. Uh, and, but, that, but getting that done is not a simple thing. They have to, um, among other things, create confidence that the, the economy is going to get better and people aren't sure it's going to get better. They're also battling other things that are going on in Washington, obviously with the fiscal cliff, which is making people think, well, maybe the economy is going to go into the tank. Um, so we have to get over that. And the Fed can't do all of this by itself. It's, it's, it has very imperfect tools. So it's doing everything it can with regard to the money supply and these things that it can control to try to uh, change something which it can't control that much, which is getting companies to hire more people. If you're sitting at home and you saw this move today on the news or you heard about the report, what is the consumer supposed to think? Is this a benefit? Here's what the Fed wants the consumer to think, but you have to um, uh, scratch through a lot of uh, rhetoric to get here. The Fed wants consumers to think we're going to keep interest rates low for a considerable period of time until the economy is really back moving again. So that means if you're sitting on the sidelines thinking about buying a house, go out and buy a house. They want you to go do that. That's the kind of thing they want you to do. The other thing the Fed is doing is they're also taking safe uh, bonds and other types of securities like that off the market by buying them and putting them in their own portfolio because they want investors not to buy those super safe securities like treasuries but to go and buy stocks instead. Uh, investors haven't really been buying that completely. Uh, so that, so that has pushed the stock market up somewhat, but we've still got a lot of investors sitting on the sidelines saying, too much turmoil in the economy for me right now. I don't want to take risks. How significant is the move tying the interest rate to the unemployment number? And we often know that unemployment number is a gauge of how the yeah. economy is doing. It's uh, unprecedented. I mean, it's the first time the Fed has ever done this. The Fed has been in existence for 100 years old, and it's never done anything like this. So it's very unusual. Uh, some economists are sort of scratching their heads saying mm, this might work, but on the other hand, if the Fed just keeps doing the same thing indefinitely, it sort of takes away the power of what the Fed's doing, diminishing returns, if you will. So it's not clear that this is going to accomplish what the Fed wants it to. Bernanke also mentioned the fiscal cliff and how the uncertainty of reaching that cliff is already having an impact on the economy. Once a deal is struck, is that the magic wand, if you will? Is everything fixed? Will we see an immediate reaction? Well, uh, the Fed chairman, Ber Bernanke, has, uh, he's actually the guy who put the word fiscal cliff into mainstream use when he used it last February in a hearing. So he's been paying attention to this for a long time. It depends what a deal is. If a, uh, a deal is just some very small incremental thing that basically says we're going to do a couple of things just to, and basically put off the big decisions for a while, I think the markets might be relieved that we're not going to have a big problem beginning January 1st, but it certainly isn't going to be like we've solved all, all the problems with this huge mountain of debt the government has and stuff like that. I actually think that's the most likely outcome at this point. You know, we're only, the, the actual deadline is uh, December 31st. But Congress leaves uh, probably for good Washington for good uh, before Christmas. So we've only got about a week or maybe a little bit more until the real deadline. Um, and it's just hard to imagine they're going to accomplish much that's big in, you know, a week or so. Probably kick the can down that's the road just a little see bit. most likely. Yeah. Yep. Rick Newman from U.S. News and World Report joining us this morning. Rick, good to see you. Thank Thanks you so much. And, of course, his book called Rebounders, How Winners Pivot from Setback to Success.